As we mentioned, a grand jury has indicted one officer in relation to the Brianna Taylor case more than six months after she was shot dead by police in her Louisville home. Fired officer Brett Hankinson was indicted on three counts of wanton endangerment. Two other officers who opened fire were not indicted. Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron said Taylor's death was a tragedy, but that the rule of law must apply. According to Kentucky law, the use of force by Mattingly and Cosgrove was justified to protect themselves. This justification bars us from pursuing criminal charges in Ms. Brianna Taylor's death. I certainly understand the pain um, that has been uh, brought about by the uh, tragic loss of Ms. Taylor. I understand that uh, as a uh, attorney general who is responsible for all uh, 120 counties in terms of being the chief law, legal officer, the chief uh, law enforcement officer, I understand that. I understand that as a black man, how painful this is. And um, which is why it was so incredibly important uh, for make sure that we did everything we possibly could uh, to uncover every fact Louisville police shot the 26-year-old EMT in March while executing a warrant at her apartment in a narcotics investigation. Taylor's boyfriend fired once at police and says he believed they were intruders. No drugs were ever found at her home. Today, the family's attorney said it was outrageous and offensive that there were no charges related to Taylor's death. Alyssa Mark Haydary joins me now. She's a deputy director at the Institute for Innovation in Prosecution at John Jay College and a former assistant district attorney for New York County. Welcome, Alyssa. Thanks very much for being with us. The charges against fired officer Brett Hankison are not in relation to Brianna Taylor's death, but for shooting into neighboring apartments. What do you think led to this decision from the grand jury? Um, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, I think this has been a, um, a very difficult day for communities across the country. You know, it's really hard to speculate as to what led to that without being in the grand jury, which are secret proceedings. Thankfully, the Attorney General of Kentucky came out and gave us a fair amount of information. Um, and it sounds like what led to that specific indictment is that the officer, Detective Hankinson, in fact, fired bullets not into Ms. Taylor's apartment, but into the apartment neighboring hers. And so it appears that that is what led to the grand jury's decision. Do you think this decision overall is one that might merit federal oversight? Yeah, I think that's something uh, for the federal prosecutors to decide. They have a completely different set of laws to look at in terms of civil rights violations. I think what's really important here for people to remember and lessons to take away is that prosecutors in particular really need to be independent um, of, you know, those who are investigating need to not have any relations with uh, police officers who are involved in a case like this and transparency. And so I think it was helpful that the attorney general, to the extent he could, give information as to what the findings were, uh, what evidence the grand jury may have considered, and what the final outcome was. So what does that mean? What happens next with the officers who were not charged? Well, I think, you know, there's still a federal investigation going on, so we don't know what's going to happen there. Um, there was a civil suit, which, uh, as we all know now, has been settled by the city between, you know, the city and Ms. Taylor's family. Uh, there may be disciplinary um, charges coming. So there's still um, some information left to be decided, but it does appear that in terms of criminal charges for those two officers in the state of Kentucky, that is not going to be going forward against those two officers. I know this might be tough to answer, but based on the facts of the case that have been made public, do you believe justice was served? I think that, again, you know, we don't have all the information that the grand jury had. I think the way to um, increase legitimacy of law enforcement, and uh, this is something that we really emphasize here at the Institute for Innovation and Prosecution, 
is, again, independence and transparency. You are not going to have a public that feels as though law enforcement has been held accountable unless you have investigators who are independent, who have nothing to do with the officers involved, unless the public is informed not just what the charges are, but why. Um, for instance, in this case, we learned that the two of the officers are not being charged because they were apparently acting in self-defense or there was some evidence to that fact. And so what's important is the public is informed at the end of this investigation in a timely manner what the results were and why. And so I think with that, uh, we'll have a greater sense that justice, justice has been served, not just in this case, but in any case across the country. All right, Alyssa Heyderi. Alyssa, thank you very much. Thank you for having me.